Hi, I'm Melanie Hempe, the founder of Screen Strong. Thank you for joining us this evening. We have an exciting program planned for you tonight. You'll be hearing from some of our medical experts and learn more about the science behind kids and screens. You will also hear from some Screen Strong families and teens. We will share what we are doing to support families during this national health crisis. And no, we are not actually talking about COVID-19. We are talking about childhood screen addiction. There is a gap that currently exists in our culture when it comes to the topic of kids and screens. On one hand, culture tells parents that technology is good for our kids at all ages. Culture tells us that kids need screens to have friends and to be social. It even tells us that kids need screens to learn for school. But on the other hand, parents are figuring out that this experiment is not working. There is constant conflict over screen time at home. Parents are discouraged and distracted as they are losing their kids. And it's all getting worse with even more challenges now during this pandemic. This isn't working and we all know it. Why am I so passionate about this issue? Because our family listened to culture and it backfired. Our oldest son, Adam, dropped out of college due to his gaming addiction because we didn't know the warning signs. We didn't understand the impact that screen overuse could have. You will get to hear from Adam in a little bit. As a result of that personal experience, we took a very different path for our younger kids, a path rooted in science and research instead of opinions. Through Screen Strong, I have been able to share that path with thousands of parents so that they can avoid the pain of video games and social media taking over their kids' lives. This pain is very deep, and I promised myself to never forget it so I could help young families avoid the same mistakes we made. Screen overuse is a serious issue, but there is hope, and that is why we're here tonight. We have serious solutions. If this is your first time hearing about Screen Strong, thank you for joining us. We are here to educate families on the medical science of child development and screen use. We share all of the warning signs so parents aren't guessing. It is our hope that we can help reduce screen time and reconnect your family. But we don't stop with, with just education. We go a step further and provide practical solutions for changes that really work. These changes will literally save your kids and change their lives forever. Parents need answers, and we feel the answer is Screen Strong. We have big problems to tackle as we build a movement to challenge this current screen culture. Our message is bold, and as you can imagine, this work takes many partners. We need a bold team with a strong leader behind us. Jonathan Daniel, our board chair, is that leader. He not only helps us with mission, strategy, and board development, but he is living out the Screen Strong message every day with his wife, Annika, and their four teenage boys. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Jonathan Daniel. I'm the chairman of the board here at Screen Strong, and I appreciate the time and attention you're giving to this subject today with us. You're gonna hear from experts. You're gonna get a lot of information on the content and the brain science and a lot of things that are just not so easy to talk about in relation to this problem, this issue that we're dealing with in society today about our children's dependency on screens today. And what we're trying to do is come alongside families and truly rescue them in this screen-driven generation. Uh, what we're gonna ask of you is that you um, really pay attention to what we believe has now become what a lot of experts are now saying is a public health crisis, addressing issues that are also dealing with decay in the home, uh, interactions with relationships, habits that children and teens are forming today, uh, ultimately that will make a massive difference in their future going forward. And so what we're gonna ask of you is that you uh, be intently uh, focused on the content, but then you also ask yourself, how could I join in or how could I get in this fight? Uh, that's what we're gonna ask you to do is get in this fight with us. We will need your help. We desperately need your help on what we believe is the front lines of a war against um, a very, very 
uh, what seems almost insurmountable mountain to climb. So we would ask that you would um, um, think about how you might come alongside us at the same time. We're also going to um, uh, ask you to also participate and be a part of Screen Strong as a family uh, to uh, be a little bit more focused about how you're intentional with technology in your world as well as those around you. So we appreciate you being here and we especially thank you for spending this time. Thank you, Jonathan. We are honored to serve thousands of parents together alongside you. You may be asking, what exactly is the issue with kids and screens? After all, screens are our future, right? I wanna quickly discuss three areas that are big problems. Number one is time. The sheer amount of time that teens spend on screens has gone from just a few hours a day to nine hours a day on average, and even more now during the quarantine. Childhood has shifted from playing outside to being isolated in bedrooms. And kids aren't moving. The majority of our kids' entertainment has moved online. Number two is content. We are not playing Pac-Man anymore. Our kids are facing toxic screens, adult content to violence. They are exposed to every awful topic that exists in life. Mindless content is dumbing our kids down and becoming the biggest time waster of their lives. There has to be a middle ground, a way for children and teens to use screens the way most adults do, as a tool and not a toy, for learning and productivity and communication. This increased screen time changes their personality, their relationships with their parents, and it enables peers to have too much influence in their lives. These are all big mistakes. In addition, our kids are not learning to be leaders. Number three, which is the biggest problem of them all, is what are screens actually replacing? Life skills are the first thing that screens replace. It is impossible to develop life skills behind a screen. Instead, kids need to be developing their life skills in real life, in person. Next is hard work and grit. Increased screen time can cause kids to regress emotionally and physically in their development. And lastly, screens replace parental guidance. Kids are turning to social media and their video games for validation and moral development instead of their parents. So why are we allowing the problem to continue? First of all, parental blind spots and biases. I know this personally too well. Parents are unaware of the dangers. They assume that that will never happen to my kid and they also assume that my kid is different and more mature than other kids their age. This thinking is fueled by a fear of overprotecting, also known as helicopter parenting. Second, young brains are not equipped to manage distracting screens because their underdeveloped brains are not fully connected or mature yet. During the teenage years, impulse control and risk-taking are at the highest they will ever be. All accelerator and no brakes. Not a good combination. We are actually hurting our kids at the most vulnerable stage of their life. Third is pers persuasive design. These platforms are psychologically designed to keep our kids hooked and staring for hours. Kids are endlessly scrolling because there are so many hooks to keep their attention. This is what we are fighting against and we know what families need. They need education, community, and support as they reduce the amount of unnecessary screens in their kids' lives. Let's hear from some parents who saw the writing on the wall and decided to become Screen Strong Families. And we said, how can you help us? We have teenage kids. All we're doing is arguing about these things. We really don't even know what it's doing to them. We, we don't know anything about what the, the brain, we don't know any of that stuff. All we know is what we're seeing physically, we don't like. When I think back to when we were sitting in restaurants and we just thought we want to be able to talk. We want to be able to like, especially if you're with other adults, you think I want to be able to enjoy this conversation and not have my kid be bored. But what happens is it just creeps into everyday life so quickly that yeah. you really don't even see it coming. The fact that um, Bill Gates and all of those tech gurus 
don't allow their children to use these and that they send them to schools that purposefully don't um, tells me everything. We pretty much thought we knew what we were doing. We, you know, handed the phone, typical on a birthday, said, here you go, we're gonna have restrictions. We didn't just, for, it wasn't a free for all, so we kind of felt like we had control over yeah. it. We would check it, but the problem is, you know, once you give your child the yeah. phone, there's it's really over. no going back. And what we really lost was presence and that, that, that power of presence with your kids. I feel like I'm really grateful that um, Screen Strong was introduced to us pretty early in Harper's life, but, but I'm, I am sad at, when I think of those first couple of years when we just thought, well, we're all going on a road trip or we're going to a restaurant and that's what we thought we needed to do. A lot of times we think we're doing the right thing by giving the screen and helping them be entertained and um, it's just, it's just important for us to be educated and, and hear what the outcome is when kids just get addicted to these things. I think as adults it's hard enough for us to not become addicted to them, so um, it's just even worse if it starts at such a young age. It's not a restriction so much as it is a replacement. When yeah. you are taking the phone away, um, you're actually replacing it with some amazing things. I find that they will, nine times out of 10, go outside, yeah. they will find something to do, they will play basketball, they yeah. love to swing on the swings. And I truly feel like there are mood changes that I see happen, even if it's just watching a TV show. If we will start it, in the morning, like if we give them a show on a Saturday morning, I see a mood change every single time. Um, and so I just, I, we just weren't made for all of this screen time and they can learn all of these amazing skills by not being on the screen and it's okay to let them be bored. What Screen Strong did for us was a complete paradigm shift about what's happening mm -hmm. in the brains, the brain science behind all of this. And knowing that really just kind of firmly more cements our resolve to take good care of our kids when it comes to the screens. I'll fully acknowledge that my home might be a little bit neater if we did iPads. <laughs> um, we're, we definitely have a, um, a lot of crafts and a lot of paper and cardboard boxes. and. Um, but when I think about the benefit, it's so worth it. It's been really cool to see the way their minds can work if we give them the chance. Since we've had Screen Strong into our lives and Melanie's really been involved, we've got presence back yeah. in the lives of our kids and it's been an amazing fruit that's come from yeah. this. Uh, from Definitely. This. I try to look at the, the long-term goal here and I think that in the end, um, you'll never regret um, limiting screens. It'll, it'll never be something that you regret. These are just a few of the families who have benefited from our programs. In our effort to provide great education for our parents, I want you to hear from two experts that support our Screen Strong message. First, we will hear from Dr. Victoria Dunkley. She has become a good friend of mine and works with kids in her psychology practice every day. She has coined the phrase electronic screen syndrome, and her book, Reset Your Child's Brain, is one of our favorites. Here's Victoria. Parents are in desperate need of education. They need to learn the signs of electronic screen syndrome and addiction, and they need more than just blanket guidelines about what to do. Screen time really does have a lot of potent effects on the brain. It affects brain chemistry, electrical activity, stress hormones, brain blood flow. All of these things can cause the brain to malfunction and the child to have mood symptoms, trouble focusing, problematic behavior. So it's not just addiction that we're worried about with screen time. Screen time actually is very much like a drug. In fact, it behaves in many ways like a stimulant, not unlike caffeine or nicotine or even cocaine. So it actually raises arousal levels and it also releases a large amount of dopamine, which is the feel-good chemical that's involved in all addictions. It actually changes electrical activity, it raises stress hormones, both the fight or flight and cortisol, the chronic stress. It disrupts the body clock, and it even shifts brain blood flow. So there's more blood flow in the primitive part of the brain and less blood flow in the higher thinking part of the brain. So when you combine all these things together, 
you can see how the brain is going to start to malfunction. Over time, screen time affects which pathways get paved in the brain. So the reward pathways get overdeveloped and the other pathways and other parts of the brain are underdeveloped. And we can actually see these in brain scans. We can see there are certain parts of the brain that have atrophy or shrinkage, and in general, the brain is less connected. So screen time causes a brain to be smaller and less connected. Now, because screen time affects the part of the brain that controls mood regulation, focus, and impulse control, it can cause all sorts of problems. It can cause the child to look like they have ADHD because they can't pay attention and they're impulsive. It can make a child depressed and anxious. It can cause rages and meltdowns and even create a bipolar picture. It can make autism worse. It makes it harder to read and learn. It makes it harder for them to follow directions and to form relationships. So all of these things can be affected. So parents usually recognize that screen time has an addictive component and that it's hard to manage. But what they don't realize is that by addressing screen time, they might be resolving a whole host of other issues that aren't so obviously linked to screen time. It takes 25 years for the brain to fully mature. So it's not realistic to expect kids to learn how to manage screen time on their own. They need our help. In fact, the very part of the brain that affects self-control, the frontal lobe, is the same part of the brain that gets impaired from screen time. So what makes the most sense is to delay exposure and limit exposure as much as possible. Thank you, Victoria. We are also excited to have Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman join us, and we love having him as one of our Screen Strong ambassadors. He is a world expert on gaming violence and aggression in kids, and the author of over 10 books, such as Assassination Generation and Stop Teaching Our Kids to Kill. Welcome, Lieutenant Colonel Grossman. Thank you, Melanie. Hey folks, I'm uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, a retired West Point psychology professor, professor of military science, author, and uh, I had the honor to write the book on killing. We know how to take soldiers and police and make them able to pull the trigger through simulators, and we know the video games are doing the same thing to our kids. Half a million copies sold in English alone. Uh, it's uh, translated to eight languages. Marine Corps Commandant's required reading, but I'm author of a dozen books. The most important one might be Assassination Generation. Uh, I gave a copy to the president. Was invited to the White House to brief the president after the Parkland Massacre. I gave a copy. Of, about a year later, I was invited to the White House to brief the vice president. On violent video games, gave him a copy of the book. And the thing that people don't realize is how desperately bad the situation is. When we, uh, when, when we, we look at the video games, we're thinking Pac-Man Pac -Man and Tetris. I said, think, uh, think. We all remember Tetris and kind of how, how addictive it could be. Think Tetris on steroids with crack. And each generation becomes more addictive. Uh, adults are wearing diapers when they play the games because they can't leave. 15% uh, of all divorces in America, video games are the cause. They're, they're addictive to adults. They're destructive to children. And, and like a lot of you know about Fortnite. That Fortnite is rated T, 13 and above only. <laughs> you never know that. They won't tell you. But the people made the game, and we hope our standard is higher than the standard the people made the game, say kids under 13 should not be pl playing the game. If they don't, they don't advertise that, they don't let you know that. But when we talk about the impact of these games, we've got to understand that what they do is they teach the child to associate pleasure with human death and suffering. In healthy play, when somebody gets hurt, the play stops. Almost everybody out there, even you ladies, at one time or another, we played toy guns. Said bang, bang, I got you. No, you didn't. You smack him in your cap, kind of leaves a mark, and he cries. And, and everybody gathered around the hurt kid, try to convince him not to tell mom. A basketball game or football game, somebody gets hurt, the fans go silent, and the play stops. In healthy play, whenever somebody gets hurt, the play stops. In the video game, you blow your playmate's head off in explosions of blood. They beg for mercy. They, 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 they bleed and ride in pain. Does the play stop? You get points. This is pathological play. This is dysfunctional play. Can't we tell the difference between bang, bang, I got you, someone gets hurt, the play stops? And the video game where you're conditioned and to associate pleasure and reward with human death and suffering. The bullying that these games create is almost mind-boggling. 
The bullying in our schools is vastly worse than we were kids. I was bullied when I was a kid. It can't be worse than that. It's worse. Are the mass murders in this school worse than we were kids? And by the way, we're holding down the mass murders. We're catching kids ready to do the next Columbine almost daily. Every school that's a tell you never hear about the ones we caught. You never hear about the ones that didn't happen. I believe today the Columbine killers would have been caught three times over. So understand the magnitude of the harm that's being done and the bullying. Uh, everybody out there remember that bully when you were a kid who sincerely took pleasure in making you suffer. Remember that kid? Because there's many, many more of those kids out there today. And then we've got this dynamic on which you're saying things on the cell phones you would never say face to face. The bullying, the viciousness, the, the things you would never do face to face are now being done over the cell phone. And that brings one of the major, major problems. These games are addictive. You cannot turn them off. You play them all night long. And they're designed to be impossible to turn off. Right now, 200 million people are online playing video games and they're tracking every second of every person. We do this and 0.05% say, oh, good time to save the game and quit. Never do that again. We do this, absolutely nobody quits. They do more of that. It's a constant interactive feedback loop to make these things addictive. Adults are being destroyed by it. Adults are working all night long, staggering and work, sleep deprived. Children are being devastated by it. The bullying, the violence is being empowered. Just the simple dynamic of associating human death and suffering with pleasure for children. This is where we got to draw the line. And the industry will never tell you. It's like the tobacco industry, who fought tooth and nail, decade after decade, to do one thing, to sell tobacco to children. You know, we, uh, my dad started smoking in 1940 when he was five years old. He plunked a nickel on the counter and bought his first pack of Bull Durham and rolling papers and tried to roll his first cigarette. Hey, kid, candy rots your teeth. Cigarettes are good for you. Cigarettes are good for you. I all knew that. Hey, look, here's a... Here's camel ad saying uh, more doctors smoke camels. Oh, camels must be good for you. Doctors smoke camels. Oh, no, no. You got viceroys. As your dentist, I recommend viceroys. And they, were, they were lying about the harmful impact. And, and go back a generation, we got Dr. Batty's asthma cigarettes for the temporary relief of the proxons of asthma. It's just like the tobacco industry fighting tooth and nail over what? To sell their substance to children. That's the new factor out there. And, and, and then I want to put that in with the aggression, the bullying, the depression, the isolation, but most of all, the sleep deprivation. I cannot overstate how harmful a civilization-wide epidemic of sleep deprivation has been to us and our children. We know that sleep deprivation is one of the greatest predictors of suicide. Alcohol and suicide have always been related. Alcohol creates impaired judgment. You make a bad decision, never a chance to rethink it. But after 18 hours without sleep, you have impaired judgment equal to 0.08 legally drunk. 24 hours without sleep, impaired judgment equal to 0.10 above legally drunk. Some of the military research says a sleep-deprived soldier is five times more likely to take their life than somebody who's had a good night's sleep. The link between sleep deprivation and a worldwide explosion of suicide is stunning. And traffic deaths have exploded worldwide. Decade after decade, we brought traffic deaths down. Seat belts, airbags, medical technology, and now worldwide traffic deaths are up. The three major killers of our kids have exploded. Suicides, traffic deaths, and drug overdoses. And just taking drugs is impaired judgment right there, let alone making life and death judgment decisions on, on drug doses. And sleep deprivation creates chronic pain and the opiate epidemic. And so we understand the harm that's being done. And, 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 and I had a cop come up to me during one of my presentations uh, during the break. He said, I had a good girl. He said, she was an A student. She said, dad, it's embarrassing. You don't have to take my cell phone every night. You can trust me. So I, I trust her, I let her keep her cell phone. He said, a little while later, she took her life. He said, my little girl took her life. And we never knew the hell she was living in until we looked at the test text messages on her cell phone, night after night of ceaseless, relentless, vicious bullying. And he can't just ignore that stuff. We're not wired that way. She's up all night long trying to defend herself, trying to find somebody to stand up for her. He said, I knew my little girl was bullied to death. What I didn't understand until now, she was sleep deprived, tormented, and bullied to death in front of my eyes, and I let it happen. He said, I can't ignore that text message in the middle of the night. How can we expect our children to? 
kids don't need the cell phone. They don't need the text page. They don't need the social media, and they don't need the video games. So the longer and the better you protect them, the better. And as a bare minimum, when they go to bed at night, take their cell phone away from them. The greatest gift we give our kids is a good night's sleep. And by the way, by the time we become teenagers, it becomes very important to sleep in a totally dark room, a truly dark room. They're playing games all night. They try to sleep during the day. They're getting very bad quality sleep. It's a critical dynamic. And then the mass murders that are happening in our schools. This is not right. It is worldwide. Finland's had three juvenile mass murders in the school. The worst in history has been in Germany. Around the world, children committing crimes we've never seen before. In Jonesboro and Pearl and Paducah and Springfield and Littleton, Edinburgh and Santee and San Diego, Moses Lake and, 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 and Coral Springs and, and, and Parkland, Florida and Sandy Hook Elementary School again and again and again. And yes, the one thing they all have in common was this infatuation with media violence. But remember, the, it's just a day-to-day -day desensitization, the association of pleasure with human death and suffering, the bullying and the sleep deprivation, the traffic deaths and the suicides. And that is why I believe with all my heart that what is happening with Screen Strong is one of the most important things happening in our civilization right now. The very future of our, of our way of life is being threatened by this, this mass dynamic of, of, of sick stuff being fed to our children. Support Screen Strong with all your heart and soul. Believe that what they're doing is terribly important. I was able to give a copy of my book to the vice president, and I gave a copy of Melanie's book to the vice president when I was there. That's how important I think it is, right up there with, with, with mine and beyond. Take the Screen Strong challenge. I, I'm just such a huge fan of what Screen Strong is doing. Detox your family and lead the way home to, to, to reconnect together as a family, to take the toxic stuff out of your life and put the good things in. When this uh, school district in upstate Michigan did it, that the kids were in PE, were, caught, were taught hide and seek and freeze tag. Kids don't know how to play hide and seek anymore. They don't know, they've lost it. It's a lost skill. The PE teachers were teaching them hide and seek and freeze tag and, and they were out doing these things for 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, they talked about what they enjoyed the most and put themselves on a screen schedule. So it has been scientifically proven, not just Stanford Med School, but an entire school district on several occasions that when we detox those kids, when we take that screen strong challenge, we're really doing the single best thing we could possibly do for the well-being of our family, for the well-being of our children, and ultimately for the survival of our civilization. My first book uh, on killing came out in 1995. I identified the harm, I predicted the mass murders were coming. I've been fighting this battle with all my heart and all my soul for a quarter of a century, since 1995. And Screen Strong has been one of the greatest ray of hope that I've ever seen across all these years. And we need to sustain what we're doing, and they need to sustain what they're doing. They need your help, they need your support, and the first step is simply taking the Screen Strong challenge. You'd be glad you did. Screen Strong has this challenge where you go without your phone for a week and you can't text, you can't call, you can't go on social media. I took the Screen Strong challenge just because I was interested in, you know, how much time did I really spend on my phone. I didn't think it was an addiction, I didn't think I had a problem, but I just wanted to see, you know, how would I do without it. While I was on the challenge, I did a lot of reading. I took my book with me everywhere I went because when I would get bored, I used to just go on my phone and do whatever, but now when I was on the challenge, I, I practiced my piano a lot um, because I love music and I needed to practice more anyway, so that was good. Um, I was able to spend a lot more time with my family. Uh, I didn't realize, you know, how much time I really was spending on my phone and how that was really taking away from me spending time with my brother and my family and stuff, so it was really great to be with them. I would definitely encourage people to try the challenge just because going in, I didn't even think I had a problem. I was like, you know, I'm not, compared to my friends, I'm not on my phone that much. It's really not that big of a deal, but, um, Afterwards, I was like, wow, I really do depend on this, and it is such a time waster, and I really was on it way more than I thought. And so I initially did the challenge just for fun, just to see, but I didn't realize, you know, how life-changing it was actually going to be. When the question comes to video games, you're developing this persona and this identity online that is um, completely, ba it's completely um, fake. It's a waste of time because it's all this lost time that's invested in developing your personality online when that's really not true to your person at all. And it's really, um, it's manufactured and it's not genuine um, in the slightest bit. Yeah, I think like when, you, when you're um, 
you know, analyzing anything that you do, you need to say, like, is this distracting me from what's really important? And I think video games really, really, basically, they're just a big distraction. I don't really think that middle schoolers should have social media because I think at that age, it's kind of like, it's starting off this, like, culture of everything that you talk about is dominated by social media. Everything that you do is dominated by what did someone else do, uh, what was on their story, um, it just becomes this culture of talking about things that don't really matter. And it fosters insecurity because rather than finding your identity in yourself, the place that you're drawing your identity from is other people's definition of success or attractiveness or intelligence and things like that. I also think it's hard for girls because of like the comparison game. Like it's really hard looking on social media and seeing like supermodels and stuff and like yeah. how like the beauty standard is just so mm -hmm. promoted on social media. It's really it's just tiring and exhausting and it's just, it doesn't make you feel good. Not having social media or video games gives you more like real friendships. Like if you're really popular on social media, people are just gonna be like, oh, I wanna be your friend. Oh, I wanna talk to you or something. And it's like, they don't really, they just wanna be like, oh, look who I know, look who I'm friends with. They don't really care for you. Like they don't, they just see who you are on Instagram. They're like, oh, I wanna like be with this person. But if you don't have it, people don't have that incentive to be like, oh, I just want to be with them just because of how popular they are. So the people who do want to be your friends are more real. Yeah, I gave up all social media for a week back in November, but it wasn't just social media. It was getting rid of my entire phone. I wasn't allowed to text, like literally do anything except for schoolwork, and then I could call people on the phone. You know, not having it for a week was amazing. Like it made going to school and seeing people so much more exciting. Having those face-to-face -face interactions with people made it so much more yeah. enjoyable. People sometimes ask me, they're like, do you even have a life without a phone? It's like, I answer them, well, I have, I very much have a life. I have better friends, like, in person that I've met, and I, I don't know, I'm able to interact with them better than if I had social media and only interacted with them over social media. I love hearing success stories from our Screen Strong teenagers. As you might imagine, offering extensive resources that our team continues to create and develop for parents takes a significant amount of time, money, and effort. We can't do it without your support. I am proud to introduce to you Candace and Michael Salamone as they discuss those resources, their story, and the value of your contribution. Thanks so much, Melanie. Screen Strong's goal is to educate and empower all families to develop a healthy digital lifestyle for their children, one that's free from screen addiction. And it's not an easy task. We know that parents need education and support in order to do it. If you're a parent struggling with screens in your home, and let's be honest, if screens are in use, there's at least some level of tension. Screen Strong has the vital resources you need. Candace and I know that these resources take significant time and effort to produce. This is just one reason that we've supported Screen Strong for years and plan to continue that support. People often ask us how we became a Screen Strong family and how we ended up making this choice. And our story is a little different than most. We actually decided ahead of time that we were not going to introduce screens into our home. We didn't struggle with addiction and then come out of it. We were struggling with how to respond to our friends and family who wanted to give screen gifts to our kids. And then I saw one of Melanie's talks and it gave me exactly the information I needed. It empowered me with the science behind it. And then I had the tools that I needed to be able to stand firm in that decision. And it's worked great for us. Parents wonder, well, what do our kids do instead? Will they still have a social life? Well, we found that our house has been the gathering house for all the kids to come play and hang out, and it has encouraged our kids to be social and get involved. So yes, it is possible to have screen-free family, and we'd urge you to join us in helping thousands of families reconnect without screen addictions. We invite you to take a closer look at our event page. Some of you are watching this event on social media, and some might even be watching from that event page. The page address is www.screenstrongevents.com, and it's full of great resources. We have three books that'll be really helpful in this journey. Will Your Gamer Survive College? Can Your Teen Survive and Thrive Without a Smartphone? And The Screen Strong Solution, How to Free Your Child from Addictive Screen Habits. And then there's a great online course, and that'll help you understand the science that I was just talking about, the stuff behind the effects of these screens on our kids' brains. 
and you'll even learn how to recognize the symptoms of screen overuse. And we have a great documentary movie called Screened Out. It's a great resource for the whole family. Your kids will enjoy watching that and learning why the screens aren't good for them. Our Facebook group is a great place to ask questions and receive feedback from the Screen Strong team and other parents like us. So please join our Facebook group. It's called Screen Strong Families. And if you wanna get a taste of just how sweet life can be without screens, I encourage you and your family to take our Screen Strong Challenge. It's a week-long break from video games and smartphones, and the challenge is designed to give your kids an opportunity to experience all the things they've been missing out on. Please join us and help push back on the notion that kids have to play video games and be connected to social media 20 or more hours a week. That's absolutely right, Michael. I'm Adam. Um, I'm here to share with you a little bit about my experience. I've been on both sides of this issue. Basically what happened with me was video games never really became super popular until I was about 12 years old. And that's when my, my friends and I started you know, playing video games. I think it was Guild Wars was the first game because we could all play it together and it was online and we could get in a group and go around and do stuff. And so it was fun. It was new and it was fun. But um, the problem is that the other things in my life started to kind of fall off. Wasn't really motivated to do anything really outside of playing video games. And so that was, that kind of continued through high school. And so once I went to college, my freshman year, the first semester went okay. Um, I was able to, you know, manage everything and I did all right my first semester, but my second semester, I just kind of lost, lost my mind with the video games. And I ended up failing two or three classes. I ended up dropping out and that's when I, you know, I joined the army. That was, that was great for me. You know, we were, we were exercising all the time and basic training. There was no, like we, no phones, like you didn't have, you didn't have anything. It was just you and your army issued underwear. And, um, so that's what we were doing through basic, just running around, getting dirty in Georgia in the middle of summer. And, um, that really kind of helped me get out of the rut that I was in. And, um, once I was out, I kind of realized how bad things were for me. Like I wasn't happy, I wasn't motivated, I wasn't healthy, I wasn't really doing the things that I really enjoyed that brought me joy. There is hope for everyone who's, who's struggling with this, it's just there has to be a change and you have to make the change because nothing's gonna change on its own, you have to intentionally make those changes that you want in your life. And I think that that's why Screen Strong is so important because it gives, it gives parents a lot of things. It gives you information so that you can make informed decisions. It gives you a community where you can talk to other parents who are having issues. And that's why I support Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. Screen Strong has a bold message of delaying video games and social media through adolescence, and that's one of the reasons why I support Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. I support Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. Hey, my name is Dawn Woods, and I am all about some Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. I support Screen Strong. We support Screen Strong. I support Screen Strong. I support Screen Strong with all my heart because it is the single most important endeavor happening today that deal with the most important challenge to our civilization. Wow. Now you see why I support Screen Strong. What a powerful evening. You may be asking yourself right now, is it really possible to make a dent in such a wide scale problem? Yes, it is. It is not only possible, but Screen Strong is doing it. I'm on the front lines every day watching families being transformed. Parents are stepping into coaching roles and bringing their children back from the brink of screen dependency and even worse. Over and over, parents are saying, thank you, you gave me my kids back. We believe the foundation for big changes has been laid and we're now positioned to transition the Screen Strong initiative into a full-scale movement. In order to progress to the next level, 
We must package our existing Screen Strong curriculum into a format that can be duplicated nationally. And that's where you come in. Your partnership will allow us to expand our Screen Strong challenge to more families and schools, design our Screen Strong curriculum to be used across the country, and ultimately to host a national summit to increase awareness and affect exponential change. I hope you're beginning to see how you can make a tremendous difference. We're asking for you to come alongside us, to partner with us financially. On our event page, you will see the links for options to give. All levels of partnership are significant in helping us expand our mission into a movement and to rescue this screen-driven generation. Once you determine your level of partnership, please take the extra step and share this event with three of your friends, family, and coworkers. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for supporting the Screen Strong mission. The goal of our Be Screen Strong initiative is to save kids from their virtual worlds. Through Screen Strong's generous donors and partners like you, parents receive the tools to reduce unnecessary screen time in their home and convert that unnecessary screen time to more family time. By donating to Screen Strong, you can reconnect thousands of struggling families and help them reclaim their kids. Thank you for your support this evening, and remember, be Screen Strong.